So we're here at the DEI project badging uh, coordination meeting, and we have a special guest, Hugo. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to share my screen real quick, if y'all don't care. I'm going to share no. it if you do care. Yeah, just share it. That's how I roll. Don't ask, beg forgiveness, don't ask permission. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah. We've kind of, so this meeting, just a little context, this meeting has been a little bit more informal to date, and now we've kind of formalized it, and it's on the chaos calendar, it's open to whoever, um, just like the rest of our um, chaos meetings here, so um, yeah, so that's where we are. Um, first thing, I just thought it would be nice to kind of go around and introduce ourselves and get to know Hugo a little bit, um, and I can start, and then I'll just hand it off to somebody, and then we can just pass it on that way. So um, I'm Elizabeth, I'm the Chaos Community Manager, and I've been here at Chaos for about three years now. Um, I've been in open source a long time, 20 some years. I stopped counting, which is probably good because it just depresses me anyway when I think about it, when I think about it how long I've been around. Um, and yeah, I also do help out with the All In project. So I'm kind of a, have a, a foot in both camps, I guess you could say. Um, and that's pretty much me, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the US. So I'm going to pass it along to Anita. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Hey, everyone. And hello, Hugo. I am Anita Human. I am a developer advocate and technical writer. So um, I'm working on the DEI research under the um, Kills DEI working group. And also developing the web content for the All In Kills um, budget initiative as well. So um, I'll pass it on to Sean. Hi everyone, I'm Sean Goggins. I'm one of the Chaos co-founders, maintainer of Augur, co-director. Um, been here in Chaos from the beginning and I'm just excited about this All In project. We've been talking about ideas like this with Demetrius and her colleagues for a couple of years now. So it's exciting to see some of this work result in working tools and things. So I will pass it along to let's see Mel. Yeah, hi, um, I'm Mel. Um, I'm a student uh, researcher at the University of Missouri. Um, I'm working on the DEI uh, badging project, like on like the machine learning side. Very happy to be here. I think Matt, you were, you were last here. Sounds good. I'm Matt German Prey. Nice to meet you, Hugo. I'm one of the co-founders of the Chaos Project too, been around for a while. Uh, professor also in another job that I do. Um, so just kind of work on many things chaos related and that's good to be part of this this project as related to chaos. So um, Hugo, do you want to introduce yourself too? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm Hugo. I've been involved in uh, open source for some time now, mostly uh, within the R community, contributing to uh, packages in, in many different organizations. Uh, currently, I'm working on a project that is called uh, Epiverse, so trying to build an ecosystem of uh, R packages that work well together uh, for epidemiology. Uh, so my, my position in this project is uh, lead software architect. Uh, we've had a discussion in the past with, I, I don't know if I can say with chaos, with chaos, but we've had a workshop where we invited uh, Don and we had a brief introduction to, to chaos. And so since then, uh, I've been keeping an eye on, on what you're doing. Uh, I've seen also the All In project and it's nice to see uh, both projects kind of converging here. Awesome. Well, we are super, super happy to have you here. And um, just so you know, you are really the first one to kind of go through this process with us. So <laughs> we appreciate any any and all feedback that you have as we go. And also um, just keep in mind it is a pilot. So there might be some bumps in the road, but that's the whole point of this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Um, you said you already are a little bit familiar with chaos. So um, we might be able to skip this general overview, but um, I'll just do a 30 second quick 
uh, overview, we basically develop metrics here around open source community health, and that can be from a, a lot of different angles. Um, DEI is one. Um, we also look at things like risk and um, the evolution of projects. We look at um, just general statistics, general metrics. Um, and then we also will bring some of those more atomic or individual metrics together in what we call metrics models. So um, that would look at like a bigger picture with different pieces put together. So if you think of your body, you look, would look at like your blood pressure and your weight or your you know white blood count, like whatever, those are individual numbers. But when you put them together, it really paints a bigger picture of your health. Um, we also do have these badging initiatives here, um, which is kind of our attempt to take some of our metrics that we develop in in theory <laughs> and really put them out in the world and, and make them applicable to um, to others. And so we have our DEI event badging, which is where this started, actually, and um, that is for event organizers to just uh, fill out an application. We look at some of the, the things that they're doing at their event and um, then we issue a badge and it's a very manual process. Um, the uh, volume is a whole lot less <laughs> than projects and it's, you know, it's just a little bit more clear cut, like where an event is what it is, like it starts, it stops, it's done. But projects are a little more complicated, as you know, so um, this is why we're trying to uh, take kind of some of the things we're learning from event badging, but also um, automate a lot of the process so that it can be a little more scalable um, for the future. And then um, you also said you were a little bit familiar with All In as well, is that right? Yeah. Sort of. Okay. Yeah, so all in um, kind of the chaos folks here on this call and also Demetris and Sarah, who usually comes to this call, she's not here today, um, from GitHub, we had been chatting about like open sourcing diversity, equity, inclusion, because a lot of people are working on this. And so we kind of were trying to bring people together in an open sourcey kind of way. And then all in kind of evolved under the GitHub umbrella. So it's, it's, um, right now, it's it's kind of owned by them, I guess you could say. Um, they sponsor it. They really support, do a lot of the like financial support behind it and, and um, the, the coordination of it. Um, but it has two pieces to it. So there's all in for maintainers, which is what we're working on right now. And then there's also all in for students. And the students piece is aimed obviously towards students, but I'm um, just really onboarding folks into open source and integrating them, um, teaching them like how it works and and all that stuff. So. Um, as I said, we're, we're focusing on all in for maintainers right now, and the badging initiative is just one of the, they have, a, they have several initiatives under the all in for maintainers. Um, so there's like a, a resource hub for, uh, around DEI resources, there's a few other things in the works, but um, this is really kind of the, the bigger, the bigger one, the bigger project under the all in umbrella. I'm gonna stop there, see if you have any questions, just, I just wanted to make sure you kind of understood like where we're all kind of coming from. Uh, no, I think it's all clear. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Um, so general overview of the DEI badging process, and I see that Sean has put a link here. So I will be happy to hand this off to whoever wants to kind of go through the process. If somebody I, else wants to do it. Yeah, I can explain the process. This is at a, both a high level, hopefully, as well as a, um, a kind of explaining some of the details of how information is exchanged. Um, and apparently I'm not signed into Miro right now. It's just weird since I just was in it yesterday, but there we go. Mm -hmm. All right, I will try to share my screen and see if Zoom lets me do that. I can share my screen too. I'm, I have the board up. All right, can we see okay. that? Yep. Okay, so as far as we are right now, um, this is just the little pink dot represents the project badging website. This fuchsia dot is Augur, the black dot's the maintainer, and the yellow dot is GitHub. And so there's a website that we have for all in open source, and then there's a link for project badging, which Ruth and Enoch have shared with us previously. And that's the sort of landing page for learning more about project badging. After a person or a maintainer learns more about it, uh, they would apply for a project badge right there where Matt is hovering or where he was hovering right here. And when they apply for a project badge, all of the data regarding that application is maintained by the website and the website submits the repository for which badging has been requested to the auger 
system, which does some machine learning and sends back a report. And then in somewhat parallel, it does a scan of the DEI.MD file. Um, there's a bit more detail here with regards to the, the maintainer needing to install the bot, which requires minimal permissions um, just from the user so that essentially we know enough information to be able to email that maintainer the report and the badging information, and also that we know that this person is a maintainer, which is the one thing that we need to check, so that only maintainers are requesting um, project badges. So that scanning takes place, then the maintainer gets an update, um, and they get an update on the DEI file scan that we either found it there in good shape or did not. And then there's a report status check, which uh, Enoch and I continue to refine exactly how this works, um, what we discussed earlier this morning is, because um, Enoch was explaining last week how he doesn't know when Augur has a report ready, and I explained to him this morning that's because he wanted us to provide an API with the report. And so we kind of arrived at um, what the website application is going to do is provide uh, essentially another API that Augur subscribes to or that they sub they subscribe to so that whenever um, whenever the report is finished, Augur will uh, hit that endpoint and notify them that the API is available. So that's kind of the, the new nuance in there. And then at the end of all that, the bronze level badge is complete. So the website maintains the repo badge date and badge level publishes the project badge on the website and then emails the DEI status auger report and a markdown for the badge to put in the readme here back to the maintainer and then the silver badge level is what comes next and obviously all that's TBD. For right now we're just working on bronze. That is the end. Any questions? Yeah, I was wondering if, if you go ahead questions on that. And thank you for doing this workflow, Sean. It helps a lot. No, no problem. Uh, maybe maybe one question, uh, but maybe it's something that you plan on discussing just after. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't remember exactly what kind of criteria would be included right now, uh, like to do the, the analysis. We will talk about that. So we'll talk about what's in the DEI.MD file, I think, mm -hmm. next. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, that's really the central piece of this whole thing is this file that we've, uh, yeah, we might as well go ahead and talk about it now. Um, it, we, we're calling it the DEI.MD file. So it's, it's aimed to sort of emulate the code of conduct file or a license like contributing like all of those files that are centralized and visible and um, people kind of know where to go to see that information so we're proposing that this is a new file that um, that is added to your github repository where people know where they can find this stuff um, and i'm going to share again if that's okay yeah that's why i unshared <laughs> awesome so right now, this is the file, and I will drop this here in the chat as well. And I think it might be in those minutes also. Sorry, I lost my chat screen. Here we go. It's right here. So this is kind of the template that you'll use, Hugo, and you're going to take this file and then really um, change it to be applicable to your project, if that makes sense. So this is a starting point, and then these are the four areas that we're going to ask you to describe um, project access communication transparency newcomer experiences and inclusive leadership. And if you click on any of these, it gives you a little more context about what that is. Um, maybe. There you go. <laughs> um, so essentially, to what extent does your project provide access and help those with various access needs and that can it's a pretty broad definition right now of access so we're looking at things like um, not just accessibility but also can people even get to your platform and tools that you're using you know is your is there anything that keeps people away um, what kind of um, non-code contributions are you supporting and recognizing um, 
and translations, things like that. So it's pretty broad. Um, and there is really no right or wrong answer here. Um, we're just really asking projects to just self-reflect and maybe ask these questions that maybe they've not asked themselves before. And um, by going through that process of that self-reflection and just taking time to really think about what you're doing in the project, um, we think that that's just gonna help folks um, center DEI in their projects. And that's really, really the whole point is that we're just trying to get projects to kind of think about these things a little more and center uh, DEI a little more in their projects. So we figured that this would take you some time to really sit down and, and work with your um, fellow community members um, on kind of how you want to answer these questions. Um, so that's why we're starting here and we want to just kind of bring you in early in the process. Um, take as long as you need to go through this. And like, again, we've, we've laid some examples here um, of things that, you know, you could put here, but, um, um, oh, Sean is asking if we want to make this a 50 minute meeting. Yeah, I'm just asking because I, I have a 1030 scheduled every day on Monday, but we've gone over the last couple of times. So yeah, I think we can. And it looks like Ruth has a conflict now too. So we'll have to re, uh, maybe redo what time we do this meeting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really, that's that's the that's it in a nutshell. Is is um, just starting with this DEI.mb file, and then as Sean explained, it will take that file, and we're going to scan it to make sure that it's. We're going to use machine learning to scan that, make sure it's like a normal language and not just like garbage and not right. the sample. You know, not exactly the sample. And then um, Sean and the Augur project are going to run a report on your community based on whatever repo you tell us. Or, or put it in, so. So I'll add a few things here, Hugo. So, and Elizabeth said all of this before, but I really just wanna reemphasize a few things. So for the DEI.md file, if you saw that sample had like A, B, C, D, E, like you don't, there's no number that you have to have. It's whatever you're doing as a project. So we're not counting that you have to get to E, for example. It's It's whatever you're doing as a project. And we don't, evaluate what you say, because whatever you're doing as a project is something that um, you are reflecting on and you're sharing it with your community members. And really the evaluation, a lot of that detailed evaluation is meant to be done by your community members. So if you say, for example, um, like we provide access by having global meetings, you know, globally attentive to everybody in our community, when in reality you don't, then your community members could say, I'm not sure that you should put that. <laughs> That's not really true. <laughs> you know, everything seems to be US centric, for example. You know what I mean? Um, so the evaluation of that DEI.md file really is meant to come from your community members, not from us. We're just making sure you have the headings. We're making sure that you have the some language in there that talks about it and that it's publicly accessible. So does that help on that, on that file? Yeah, uh, it's really helpful. Uh, I think it's really nice because it gives us a framework to think about this DI question. And the thing that I like is that it, it seems more, as you say, like more personal than the code of conduct. So I think it's important to have the code of conduct, but lately I've had the feeling that some projects tend to include it without really like meaning uh, what's what's inside. So it, it's nice to have something that is a bit more intentional maybe uh, yeah. I, I have two questions one really technical and one maybe about the next steps so the first one is that you say that you are not uh, really like evaluating the content of the file but is there a specific format that uh, we should follow that will be required uh, to analyze the file uh, like for example should we keep the specific headers or I don't know anything Yes. So the, the file that's in that GitHub repo, just make sure that you have like project access, communication transparency as those headers. Okay. So just, a, I, I, sh I should just keep the headers and then yep. the rest inside can be free text. Okay. Uh, and then the other question, but it, it might be uh, too early in the project to really think about this, is that... Uh, I would assume that most of the thing that we write for a specific repo is probably true for the, the rest of the repository in the GitHub organization. 
So some 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 of these files on GitHub, like the code of conduct, for example, can be set at the organization level. Is it something that you plan on doing or that would make sense in your opinion? Uh, yeah, basically, what are your thoughts on this and maybe the next steps about this? Yeah, so if I bring this back up, so here we have like, I think this is what you're asking, like recommendations on where to put the file, the DEI sort of, not really? Uh, kind of, so it's related uh, to this, but so uh, within your GitHub organization, you don't have to put the code of conduct file in every repository. You can okay. have one that applies to all the, the repository if you put it in the .github repository in your organization. So we are, okay, so so to answer that question, we are hoping to work with folks at GitHub to have something like that maybe done. Um, but there are some technical issues of having, just like the code of conduct, like having that picked up across every repository. And that's something that we don't particularly control. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Yeah, so in the in the meantime, I think, the most sensible thing would be you I think you still could put it in the dot github repo or if you have a community repo that kind of represents the entirety of the community every it's so hard because every project is structured differently <laughs> so it's and, and you will tell us I think in the application am I right Elizabeth where that is located I I think so that's my understanding, um, but I know that Sean and, and Mel and Enoch talk about this stuff a lot <laughs> and things change quickly, so I think that's where it is right now. Um, but yeah. Like I don't think I don't think they're hoping to just guess where it is, so I think that for now, yeah, you would have to tell them where this file is and then they'll grab it. Yeah, sounds good as you as you mentioned, we will probably need. A little bit of time to draft the file and then just moving it is not the difficult part so exactly and that's what part of this pilot is is like is it more sensible here is it as you are doing it it'll you can tell us where it makes the most sense for you as well yeah okay sounds good and so for the next steps really um it's just you um taking time to write that file out and as soon as you're ready then we can take it and um we'll scan it and we'll we'll go, go through the rest of the process so the ball's kind of in your court. You just tell us whenever you're ready. You can send me an email. And um, if we do have the badging website up at that point, we'll point you to that. Um, otherwise, we'll just kind of sneak around it and do it behind the scenes. Does that make sense? Yep, yep, sounds great. Awesome. And then I have one last comment. It's just so you understand, Hugo, on that report that comes back. So there are two things that you'll get back. One is essentially a check to make sure the DEI.md file is present and it exists. And based really based on that is what provides you the badge. But we also will provide you a report based on a repo that you provide that will do things like scan for uh, inclusive language, or it'll kind of give you insights around the climate we were talking about earlier this, as an example of, of your community. We don't pass judgment in that report we don't say you're doing a terrible job <laughs> with inclusiveness or you're doing great with just be again every community is so different it's hard to know what is good and what is bad in a particular community so the report is really just here are things that we're seeing and it may be useful to you to reflect on this report and think about kind of what you see in the report and how it might be improved or you're okay with it within your community so it's that context is just impossible for us to understand. So we never give you anything that says you're doing a good job or you're doing a bad job. We're just trying to give you some insight into areas you might not have been looking. Okay, yeah, makes sense. I, I do think at the moment we are not doing as well as we could or we should, but we are hoping that uh, we can make it better. Yeah, and that would be like, that's then your judgment call to make from the report, not our judgment call to make from a scan. It's just trying to provide you more information where you can, and and as part of that report too, we I think we're intending to provide like, here are some suggestions of things you could do if you're, if you're not liking the numbers that you're seeing with respect to whatever it might be. 
Um, so here's some, some data that might help you and here's some things you might do to make improvements if you would like. Right on. Awesome. Um, Hugo, just reach out. You can send me an email whenever you're ready. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. OK, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And you go get some sleep.